Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think that if the EPA administrator uh, should do the courageous thing and, design, and resign, then so should the governor. Um, you know, as a mom, I've been deeply troubled by the testimony and revelations that have been raised in this series of hearings on, on the water crisis. Um, it's the kind of human suffering that should not happen anywhere, let alone the greatest nation on the face of the earth. The failures at every level of government in this disaster are alarming. I don't think there's any debate at this point or any question that it is the Snyder administration's Department of Environmental Quality that created this crisis in the first place. However, as a member from Illinois and one of the states that falls under the EPA's Region 5 alongside Michigan, I'm also extremely troubled by how the EPA also failed in its duty to serve as the last line of defense for the children of Flint. And while the Flint crisis has rightfully garnered the most attention lately, I'm deeply concerned that communities all around this country are at similar risk. In Chicago, we have one of the greatest, uh, better quality, we have one of the better quality water systems in the nation, but we are also learning that under the deficiencies in the lead and copper rules testing protocols, our Department of Water Management is conducting testing that in high risk instances, and I quote, systematically misses the high lead levels and potential human exposure. Furthermore, a report from the Chicago Tribune found that since 2003, more than half of the sampling sites tested by the Chicago Department of Water Management were in homes owned by department employees and might not be located in high-risk areas. So, Administrator McCarthy, um, when water systems such as in Flint or Chicago uh, elect to use their own employees' homes as sampling test sites, with employees themselves administering the test, what safeguards are in place to ensure that the results are not corrupted or skewed? Well, it, there, there are protocols for this, and one of the things that, that, things that I have done is to, is to send a letter to every governor and every agency that has primacy on this across the U.S., to have them post their protocols, to explain what they should do again, and to make sure that they are following that. We are also looking at how we can strengthen the lead and copper rule. It clearly needs to be strengthened. And I have never suggested that the system didn't feel or that EPA is not looking at its own place in this. The Office of the Inspector General is looking and investigating at my request to make sure that we did everything we could with the information available to us. But the one thing I am just trying to make very clear is we did not create this problem. The question is, did we run in and try to solve it and work it as quickly as we possibly could, and what else could we possibly have done? And I have been trying to look and answer that question. And anybody who can tell me what, what else we could have done under the law, I want to hear it, or even under common sense, because right, it is an well, area well, let, in which let me, I agree let me, with let me the governor. Let me answer that for you, it. because I am not on your side in this. I, I am certainly that. not on the governor's side. I am not on your side. The answer to you is, would you not rather have jumped in too soon, despite the law, to protect absolutely. the children of Flint and be hauled into Congress to testify and explain why you stepped in too quickly to safeguard health as opposed to why you didn't act soon enough? Governor, I mean, uh, Congresswoman, we actually didn't understand or know the full extent of the problem until July. July of, of, of last year. But you still did nothing. You no, didn't, we, that is let, incorrect, let, me, let me make it. Uh, let's go back to. Let's the, go. No, 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 no. I'm talking here. Let's okay. go back to the law. You yeah. said earlier, you said that MDEQ was telling you that they were taking action. Mm. Yes. So you waited for them to take action and no, they sir. slow road everything. No, Congressman, now, just let me explain. There's the two tests that Congress has given us because Congress was very clear in the law and also in, in the. the, the uh, the congressional record that they wanted us to keep in our lane and they didn't want us to step on states' rights. Okay. Two, two things. I had to have the data, which I told you I didn't have until July 21st, and I had to show that the state wasn't taking appropriate action. On the 21st, they said they would. I had no justification legally. So what we tried to do was to get information into the community's hands. We tried to tell the public there is a problem here. Okay, I only have but 30 seconds left, so I'm, I'm going to take my 30 seconds. Do we need to change the law? Do we need to change yeah. the statute so that you will step forward sooner when you have an epic failure on the part of the governor of a state, as is in the case of Governor Snyder's absolute failure in protecting his citizens in, in Michigan? Do we need to change the well, law? Because we very, asked this question of the EPA hurdle. as recently yeah. as yesterday, and you didn't yeah. answer it. And so tell me, do you need to change, do we need to change the law so that you step in sooner? 
It is a very high hurdle, but I will say in 35 or 36 years almost of working in this business, this is the first time that I have seen a state fail to, to abide You're by not the recommendations we're giving them. But, but most states work collaboratively with us. We General have